severed heads, dangerous women, haunting landscapes, primal urges and dreams filled European painting in the last decades of the 19th century. These subjects and their interpretations came from a new mental attitude characterized by unreal motifs and depictions. The underlying idea of this attitude was that visible and definable reality represents merely the foreground of a universal scheme. Expressing this scheme in art was not possible directly, but only through suggestions and illusions. The roots of this attitude reach far back into history and extend through various cultures. Romanticism already bore its traits, got amplified in the works of the pre-Raphaelites, and became the primary way of expression of symbolist poetry and arts. In this video, we will be looking into some of the main subjects of symbolist art and their interpretations. Remember that all these motifs are more complex and deserve in-depth videos on their own, and this is more of an introduction. Before going further, if you are interested in art history content that is a little more obscure, we will be putting out more videos soon, so make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Felician Rops's art confronted society with its amoral tendencies, depravity, and debauchery, starkly contrasting the strict social norms of the end of the century. Many of Rops's blatantly sexual and even obscene depictions were perceived as scandalous at the time. However, in his deliberate breach of taboo, the artist held up a mirror to his contemporaries and exposed the prevailing bigotry. It is reflected best in none other than his famous watercolor Pornocrates, in which the artist pays homage to the dominion of uncontrollable primal urges. The painting depicts a half-naked woman against a blue background, blindfolded and led by a pig. The black stockings and gloves accentuate the woman's nakedness and eroticism. Beneath her is a classical frieze with personifications of fine arts in resigned positions with bowed heads. The modern woman is guided by her instincts, symbolized by the pig trampling over the tradition of ancient arts. At the same time, it represents how Felician Rops's art rejects academicism and society and denounces bourgeois hypocrisy, repressing moral freedom. Arnold Bocklin conceived Villa by the Sea in 1863, soon after returning to Rome, following a difficult time working in the north. The painting was initially commissioned by Arnold Bocklin's great supporter, Count Schack, and became widely popular. In total, the artist produced five versions of the painting. Its success encouraged Bocklin to create similar intensive landscapes, like the Isle of the Dead and Prometheus. The scene's setting is classical, but it evokes a mood of longing that reminds of the northern Romantic landscape painting tradition, a tradition Bocklin had absorbed while studying at the Dusseldorf Academy. The earliest sketch of the composition shows a couple leaning on a wall in a gentle evening reverie. Like all the others, this later version has a more tragic and lonely aspect, with a single shrouded woman looking out to sea. There is a sense of foreboding, intensified by the wind that blows through the poplars above the villa. Bocklin's landscapes aren't merely copies of nature, but internal projections of the artist's imagination. They are a subjective synthesis of the interior and exterior world. They are edited notions of memories of nature the artist had, infused with the haunting feelings of gloomy and gripping visions of the psyche. Freud and the development of psychoanalysis, the women's movement, and the struggle between sexes, as reflected in 19th century literature, provided a background for the projections of the woman in symbolist art. These projections often recall terms such as entanglement, ensnarement, and man-eating. They peaked in the image of a femme fatale, fatal woman, with endless variations in the works of symbolism. At the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, Franz von Stuck painted at least 11 variations of sin. The pale figure of a woman takes up most of the painting, her head and full dark hair lie in shadow, a black snake coils around her hips and abdomen, concealing the pubic area. After curling out of sight behind the figure's back, its head re-emerges with its mouth slightly open. Both the snake and the woman are staring back at the viewer, presumably male, enticing and preparing for his destruction. 
Gustave Moreau is one of the earliest symbolist artists who inspired a new younger generation of French artists. In symbolist art, as in Moreau's work, considerable importance is given to creativity. A person who can create something is seen as an exceptional human being. Gustave Moreau's painting Orpheus greatly influenced subsequent symbolist renderings of the myth. It depicts the moment of victory after the mythical poet's tragic death when the Thracian maiden, holding the head in her arms and contemplating it peacefully, has become aware of its power. The symbolist artists of the late 19th century found a profound expression of their complex aesthetic religious attitude in the figure of Orpheus. The head of Orpheus is here an image of the eternal isolation of the artist, misunderstood and martyred and venerated only after his death. The death by dismemberment transforms Orpheus into a victim and a martyr. It simultaneously sets the stage for the triumphant victory of his transcendence of death with the power of song and music. To symbolists, sleep and dreams are considered withdrawal from mundane reality. However, they don't bring a sense of liberation from it. On the contrary, they surrender the human psyche to the dark powers of the unconscious. Both Francisco Goya and Henry Fuseli had already established this in their works, and symbolists saw it as a way of dragging the viewer from the familiar into the world of the indeterminate. Paraphrase on Finding a Glove is the first series that earned Max Klinger's art public recognition. It was exhibited at the 52nd Academy Exhibition in Berlin and caused tensions among the German public. Nonetheless, it was bought by the Berlin National Gallery. In the first drawing, we see a skating rink, where several people enjoy themselves, similar to contemporary magazine illustrations. In the second, the artist focuses on the two protagonists of the series, a lady who drops the glove and a gentleman skating behind her who bends to pick it up. In the third image, he is sitting up in bed, the glove in front of him on the covers. He has not returned it to the lady as etiquette required, but has kept it as a reminder. Seemingly, it is a fetish that fuels his imagination, which will confront him in the following eight pictures with a series of wish dreams and nightmares. Gradually, Klinger takes the viewer from an everyday event to the world of the fantastic. All of these motifs and ideas were a big part of the intellectual climate at the end of the 19th century and, as already mentioned, far more complex than shown in this video. If you want to go through each of these individually, write it down in the comments. The Severed Head one is coming soon to the channel. Meanwhile, I will post some related articles and books in the comments you might want to read.